Jesus, the light of the world. Children saying, walk in the light. As he is in the light, and the scripture says, then will we have fellowship one with the other. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, will cleanse us from all sin. Let us pray, most gracious and heavenly Father, we do come before thee at this hour of the day with a heart full of praise and thanks for your many wonderful blessings, great and small. For your loving arms of protection around about us, shield us from all that harm and danger and the sins of this world. Father, as Jesus taught us to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. All power belongeth unto thee forever and always. Father, we thank you for your love in that you gave unto us thine only begotten Son, and he so loved us that he gave his life way back on Calvary. And the blood that he shed has not lost its power even today. It reaches the valleys, out on the ocean, wherever you might be. The blood of Jesus Christ still cleanses from sin. Father, remember the world in its entirety, them that are less fortunate than we are, those in the hospitals, the convalescent homes, the jail houses. Go by Riverside, dear Lord, 205, where Sister Jackie Allman is. Thou knowest. You're the great I am. <clears throat> Beside thee, there is none other. You know what? You made us, you created us, and you know all about us. And there's nothing too hard for you to do. We pray, dear Lord, that you remember the sister who has been afflicted in body, that you will move that out, cast it into the utmost parts of the sea, and replace it with that which is sufficient to repel all such. And then for the testimony in her mouth for the power that still lies within the almighty God. Father, you're the great I am. And beside thee, there is none other. You so loved us that you have provided unto us an avenue of escape. Escape from the pits of hell. Sinful acts things that are displeasing, you have provided for us an avenue of escape. And it is through thine only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. So may we ever walk in the light as you are in the light, that we might have the fellowship that is necessarily needed in order to in prepare us for that great day when our Lord will come. We pray, dear Lord, that you will remember those that are less fortunate than we are, those that are here and there, up and down, in and out, have no sense of direction. Pray, dear Lord, that you will settle them down and speak unto them the words of peace, love, joy, and happiness. So, Father, we do pray that you will remember the couple that is celebrating the anniversary that you will ever bless them to be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we do pray. Now, Father, open unto us the windows of heaven. Pour us out a blessing. That we might have what is necessarily needed in order to impart unto others the ways that are pleasing and acceptable in thy sight. This is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, we do pray and for his sake we thank you. Together can we all say amen. Give an honor to God today and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the ministers of the gospel.
to the diggings, the congregation, and those that are assembling, and even those that are tuning in. We say good afternoon, and may God bless you. God is good, and his mercy endureth to all generations. <clears throat> Thank God for the principles, the teachings, the doctrines of Christ. Thank God for the scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect. First be to God, then to leadership, and then to one another. Thank God for my parents one day. Hearing the gospel, taught it to me. I was born in a way, read in a way, and still in a way that leaded to life everlasting. Thank God for my wife, our sons, our daughter, our daughter-in-laws, our grandchildren, and for the blessings that he has bestowed upon us all. We thank God for this scroll which reads obedience, love, reverence, and respect first being to God, then to leadership. And if you notice, it's in three different places. Twice on the wall. And so when you look up here, you can't help but see it. It's first to God, then to leadership, then to one another. Thank God for the man of God, Elder Life of Solomon Mishaw and his companion, two beautiful people whom God fixed up. You notice I constantly say whom God fixed up. God brought him up out of sin, taught him the ways of righteousness, and they in turn started off. 1919, on 19th and Jefferson Avenue, preaching the gospel, a life above sin. Amen. A life above above, not a life in sin, but a life above sin. When you say you're saved, saved from what? Amen. You know, I said if the building, you in the building and the building catch on fire, when are you saved from the fire of that building? When you get out of the building or when you get out and away from the building? Those that got out of the world trade, fell on top of many of them, and they didn't get away. But when you get out of sin and get away from sin, then you can say, I thank God I am now saved from sin. Amen. Kept, kept by the power of the Almighty God. Amen. There's nothing can wash away my sins, but nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And so in 1928, Life with Solomon Mishaw came through Williamsburg as custom, preaching, pitch a tent, preach the gospel, and then he'd go indoors during the winter months, 28, 29, 30, 31. He was here in Williamsburg preaching the gospel. Developed a congregation when John D. Rockefeller came through in 1931, started buying up everything. He moved the congregation because he was renting from a building at Colonial Williamsburg. So he moved it down the congregation, down to Newport News. And we rebirthed this church in 1998. Isn't God good? 70 years later. Isn't that something? 70 years later, the Church of God was rebirthed here in Williamsburg. And so we thank God for being just that little church on the side of the road. Amen. Proclaiming peace and goodwill to all men. And it is all through Christ who made it possible. We thank God for the sparks from the anvil on page three of your programs today. <clears throat> this is the June the 25th. And that's something June is just about out of here. Just got in here, it is just about out of here. Amen. The first one said, you can forsake all your sins right now. Amen. Right now. No matter what it might be, right now you can forsake your sins in your mind. And watch this now. 
and then follow it up afterwards, how? In your actions. Isn't that something? Right now, right now, you can forsake all of your sins up here. Lord, I'm going to not do that, never no more. And then follow it up in your actions. The second said, you must have an indignation against sin. You must have. Indignation is righteous anger against injustice. You must have indignation against sin, against the preacher who preaches it, the teacher who teaches it, and the child who practices it. You must not allow no one to turn you around. May it be preacher, may it be teacher, and may it be your children. A lot of parents die spiritually because of children, sympathizing and compromising with the children. Well, mom, the others are doing it. Why can't I? Amen. The others don't live here. You do. Amen. So listen, the third says you cannot fellowship with sinners and not be overcome by sin. If you hang out with drunks, you're going to start drinking sooner or later. If you hang out with those that are sucking on them nasty, dirty cigarettes, amen. Like I told the individual one time, how long you been smoking? He said, about 20 years. And I said, no, you haven't. He said, yes, I have. I said, no, you haven't. He said, yes, I have. I said, no, yeah. He said, look, man, don't tell me how long I've been smoking. I know how long I've been smoking. I said, brother, the cigarettes doing the smoking and you being used as a sucker. Ooh. That shook him up. That shook him up. I saw him some years later, 20, 30 years later. He said, you know, I ain't smoked a cigarette since. I didn't like being used as a sucker. Amen. So he put it down. So church, you can forsake today in your mind and then follow it up in your actions. Amen. On the back of the program, it says, in today's society, much of what we see is a spirit of compromising with those who feel that wrong is right and right is wrong. Mm. But one day, sooner than later, sooner than later, he who rules both heaven and earth shall rise from off his mercy seat and move to judge all according to their deeds. Therefore, prepare ye today to do what? To meet your God. Prepare today. Don't put off today for tomorrow, because tomorrow just might be too late. And on the front of your program, and we can all take this personally, my status with God, may my status with God be acceptable. There's a lot of things we accept but they're not acceptable, amen. We go to the grocery store and we see this, we see that, and we want this, and you know, it, it's got a, a, somebody done crushed the end of this box, and I don't necessarily want it, but I'm gonna accept it. You've accepted it, but it's not what? Acceptable. God is not gonna take anything less than Jesus Christ. So may my status with God be acceptable. Amen. So truly we thank God indeed for all things great and small. We thank God for each and every one of you being in the midst today. And those that are tuning in, <clears throat> we thank God. <clears throat> today we want to speak to you about a sure foundation. Amen. A sure foundation. You heard the story about the three little pigs. Amen. And the big bad wolf. 
Amen. Three little pigs and a big bad wolf. One built his house out of straw. Another one built his house out of something else. But his out of brick. Well, the big bad wolf came to him. <clears throat> little pig, little pig, let me in. Amen. He said, no, no, no. Well, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. He huffed, he puffed, and blew the house down of straw. Then there was another one. Little pig, little pig, let me in. No, 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 no. I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. Amen. He huffed and blew, blow that house down. Then he came to the one that was made out of brick. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Little pig said, no, no. He said, well, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. He huffed and he puffed. He huffed and he puffed. It was down because it was built upon a solid rock. Church today, a sure foundation. A is used before nouns and noun phrases that denote singular but unspecified personal things. A is also used in the process of something. And we're talking about sure. Sure is impossible to doubt or dispute. And sure is also certain. You know, when the wife and I were courting before we got married, I used to always ask her the question. And she said, well, I love you. I said, are you positive? Are you certain? Are you sure? Amen. And whenever she would say something, I said, are you positive? Are you certain? Are you sure? Sure. Amen. Foundation is the basis for which something is standing upon, something that helps to maintain the stability of. It's just like the third little pig who built his house out of brick and stone and how that the big bad wolf could not blow his house down. Amen. It's the basis for which something stands or something is founded upon or is something supported by. Amen. When we rebuilt Dad's house, <clears throat> we were going to take it down to the first floor and then take it back up. But when we got down to the first floor, we noticed the beams were eaten up by termites. And so we took it all the way down to the bare foundation, which was stone, all cement rock. And we built the house back from that solid foundation. And we had this big storm in 2008, the wind blowing and rain and whatnot. And so Dad called me up and he says, Bill, he said, you built the house solid. He said, it endured the storm. Thank you, Dad. Church, today we want to speak to you about a sound foundation. <clears throat> In the book of St. John, turn with me, please. The very first chapter. Thank God for what he has done this day. <clears throat> Amen. We, wife and I attended a celebration on my brother's 50th wedding anniversary on yesterday. And <clears throat> it was a blessing to be in the midst and to see someone still in love with his wife and she with him enduring for 50 years, amen. So you got something to look forward to, 50 years. And so, <clears throat> and you got some that's, you know, wants to bail out. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I'm fed up with this. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go through all of this. And, oh, yeah. But when you put Jesus oh. in the midst, when you include him into, that's the problem. People don't want Jesus in, in no, I, I don't want the righteousness of God. 
But if you want a sure foundation today, build it upon the word of God. Amen. In the book of St. John, the uh, first chapter, brother, if you will, congregation, beginning at the very first verse, it says, in the beginning. You notice that? It says, in the beginning. That told me one day, he said, Bill, whatever you do, do it right the first time. If you do it right the first time. You won't have to worry about it over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I thank God that I did it right the first time when I chose she whom God had placed in my eyesight. Amen. This year we have 53, 53. 52 years ago, but it'd be 53 come August. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Isn't that something? 53 come August in that two months' time. And so in the beginning, in the beginning, you know, when you start off right, you can end up right. <clears throat> but if you start off wrong, you will find that somewhere in the course of that time, you're going to have to redo something. But if you Come to Jesus with the right intent, with the willingness of mind to uh, heed to the things in which he is commanded. In the beginning, he says, read. Was the word. Was, how's that word spelled? Capital W. Capital, w. that means person, place, or thing. In the beginning was the word, and the word was what? With God. With God, and the word what? Was God. How are you going to lose when you have such power existing? The word, the word, the word. If you take the word, you see, if you are filled with the word of God, then Satan cannot penetrate where the power of God exists. And if you build upon a solid foundation, amen. You see, marriage is built on love, amen. God is love. And if you build it on flesh, what's going to happen when the flesh wear out? Amen. In sickness and in health till death do you part and somebody gets sick, you're going to fall apart. Because you built it on flesh. In the beginning was the word, and the word was what? With God. And the word was? Was God. The same was what? In the beginning with God. With God. All things, the third verse said, were made by, by him. him. Read. And without him was not anything made. Nothing that was, made. was made that was made was made without him. Read. In him was life. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the life was the understanding that men have to depart from iniquity. In the book of 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, we're talking about a sure foundation today. Amen. Mom wrote a song years ago, and I built my house upon a solid rock, and I know it will surely stand. Is that what she said, Sister March? I built my house upon a solid rock, and I know it shall stand. So listen, in 1 Corinthians, Third chapter, beginning at the <clears throat> sixth verse, listen to this. First Corinthians 3, 6. Paul says, I have planted, read. Apollos watered, but, but God gave the increase. Read. 
So then neither is he that planteth anything, Read. neither he that watereth, but, but God that gave the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are what? One. One. Read. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Read. For we are laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. Read. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's husbandry, and you are, are God's, God's building. Amen. Now, the building, if God is involved, it will be built upon the foundation of God, because that stands sure. So listen, read. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me read. as a wise master builder. Wise master builder, Paul said, I have done what? Laid the foundation. I've laid the foundation and another, another buildeth thereon. Amen. Read. But let every man take heed. But he let buildeth. every man take heed what? How? How he buildeth thereupon. Life of Solomon, Miss Shaw, gave us the foundation, which is the word of God. You can't come along here in this day and time and try to alter the building because the foundation is the word. And it's one thing about God, he ain't going to change. Not for you or anyone else. You can cry, you can plead, even Jesus asked God to move the cup. He didn't want to die. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying hard, Father, move this cup. And he came to understand it is not my will, but what? Thine will be done. And when he came to that conclusion, the angels came and ministered unto him and gave him strength to be able to go to the cross. So listen, read. For other foundation can no man For lay. For other foundation. Can no man lay, then that is laid, which it is? Jesus Christ. Ah, read. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious mm. stones, read. wood, hay, stubble. Read. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For what? For the day shall declare it. It's just like when he called me up and said, Bill, you built a good house. The storm came. And it withstood the storm. There was evidence in his mind. Because you know when storms come up, and winds start blowing, you see things turning all upside down and things of this nature. And you see something still standing. You say, thank God. When the trials of life come at you, burdens, tribulations, and you can stand and then withstand, there's joy on the other side. I made it. What you say, Sister Marsha? I made it. I made it. Amen. So listen, read. Because it shall be revealed by fire. It shall be revealed by fire. What? And fire shall try every and man's work. And fire is going to try every man's work of what? Of what sort it is. If what? If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon. He what? He shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, what? He shall suffer loss. And what? But he himself shall he be himself. saved. Yet so as by fire. You're going to go through the fire. In 2 Timothy, second chapter, Paul come along to confirm. <clears throat> In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So listen, Paul's instruction to Timothy was, beginning the very first verse, is, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in who? Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same do what? Commit thou to Commit, men. Watch this now. Commit thou to who? Faithful men. Faithful men, read. Who shall be able to teach who others. Who shall be able to teach others also. also. Read. Thou therefore endure hardness. Endure the hardness as 
A good soldier, good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Why? That he may please him. You must chosen. please God and you can't please him being entangled with all of this confusion here in the world. Read. That he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Read. And if a man also strive for masteries. Yet. Yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. A sure foundation. You have to do it the right way. And when it's done the right way, it's acceptable and you can't question it. Amen. Read. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Must be. Must be. I can't give it to you without first being partaker of it. Amen. People tell you point blank. I'd rather see a sermon than to hear one. See it is how you conducting yourself. Amen. Like we didn't expect to see the brother in the restaurant there a couple so weeks ago. But there they were. They didn't expect to see us. There they were. Amen. And we didn't sit down with great big old wine bottles and things of this nature. We were having sweet tea, lemonade, and Sprites mixed together. You ever tried that? You should try it sometime. <clears throat> That's what my daughter and I usually drink. <clears throat> lemonade, sweet tea, and a little bit of Sprite. Makes for a good refreshment. Amen. Drink. But we were behaving ourselves according to how we live. Amen. And you could have think about this now. The wife and I took a trip all the way to Florida years ago. We get down there, and here's another brother and his wife from Baltimore. But they won't looking like we were looking. They don't change. See, people think because they get out and away from, they can relax and be more like the environment. You see what I'm saying? You know, we got a frog that runs around, and it doesn't matter what the scene is, he can adjust to that scene. He can change his color. If it's green, he can lay there. That's how he deceives and hide himself. He can look like the environment, but he's still a frog. Amen. And when you have the Spirit of God in you, it doesn't matter where you go. The foundation standeth. It's a sure foundation. You don't change. You don't alter your position to compromise with the, those that are involved into whatever it is. But you must stand fast. The husbandman that laboreth must be what? First partaker of the fruit. Read. Consider what I say. Consider what I say and the Lord do what? Lord give the understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer even unto bonds. But what? For the word of God is not bound. Read. Therefore, I endure all things. I endure. Isn't that something? I endure. In marriage, you have to endure. Amen. Amen. Endure. You don't throw up your hands and quit. When I first got married, you know, trouble started, and I was going to go back in the Marine Corps. I was going to disappear. Go back in the Marine Corps. And I looked at my son, who was the only one at the time, and I said, I cannot allow somebody else to raise my child. And out of love for him, I endured the hardness. And today we got 52 years and coming on 53. Isn't that something? 
Endurance, church, is because the, the marriage was built on love, and it was love that kept me in the marriage when the flesh wanted to bail out. I ain't going to take no more of this. I'm going to disappear. You know, you got a free pass to come back in after you get out of the military within a certain amount of years, my child. So listen, read. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. For what? I endure all things for the elect's sake. For the elect's sake. Read. That they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. When you are on solid ground, you endure. Amen. You have that capability of enduring the hardness. And then you're not necessarily doing it for you, but also for who? For the elect saints. Read. They obtain the salvation. That they also may obtain salvation which is in Christ Jesus. With eternal glory. With eternal glory. Read. It is a faithful saying. For what? For if we be dead with him. Read. We shall also live with him. If we what? If we suffer, we what? We shall also reign with him. If we what? If we deny him, then he what? also will deny us. If we believe not yet, he abideth faithful. He cannot do what? Deny himself. Of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they what? Strive, Strive not, not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the ear. Subverting. You want to be sure. Amen. Sure. Impossible to doubt or dispute. Read. Study to show thyself approved. Amen. Ella Dan used to always say, study not to be nutty. Amen. You study not to be nutty. Amen. Study to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed doing what? Right. Rightly right. dividing the word of truth. Amen. Elder gave us the foundation, the word of God. Amen. We thank God. He was told back then, you never make it. Having a standard of a life above sin, you never make it, Miss Shaw. But I'm a living witness. He made it. Because this church is on a solid foundation. Read. But shun profane and vain babblings. Read. They will increase under more ungodliness. These things. You, you got to be careful with certain things. Because if you become sympathetic with certain things, then certain things will then become embedded into your system of life. And they will hinder you from progressing further. Amen. You got to move things out. It's like a little black book I had. My wife looked in there. She found a, a phone number and an address. She says, you don't need this no more. Take it out. I said, yeah, I don't because I got you. I don't need that no more. Amen. When you found and have accomplished and you got the best, you don't fool with the rest. Amen. You don't fool with the rest. You don't need the rest. You got the best. Amen. So listen, read. And their word will eat as doth they can. And their word will eat as a canker. When you begin to associate, going back to them same old used to be. Amen. You find that, see, a canker is like an infection that you cannot get rid of. It's a canker that will begin to just eat away and eat away and then eat away and eat away to the degree that you won't have anything left to be eaten. Give it up. Turn it loose. Read. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus? Amen. He had two individuals that he was dealing with. And their words was eaten like a canker. Who concerning the truth have erred said that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. 
Read. Nevertheless, the foundation. Nevertheless, through all of these situations, the foundation of God standing. Sure. sure. Read. Having a seal. It's got a seal upon it, church. That what? The Lord knoweth. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And what? And let every name, everyone that nameth the name of Christ. If you're going to name the name of Christ, then do what? Depart from iniquity. Amen. Leave it alone. A sure foundation. But the foundation of God standeth sure. So listen, in the book of Romans, 12th chapter, <clears throat> the apostle Paul Gave some sound doctrine. Amen. Some, sa some sound doctrine. You know, you can't have a, a, a solid foundation or a sure foundation without sound doctrine. It's important. So listen, in Romans 12 and 1 says what? I beseech you therefore, brother, and Read. by the mercies of God. That you do what? That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Read. Holy. Holy, was it the scripture that the brother read? Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. Jesus said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. There are preachers that is saying you don't and you can't be perfect today. But Jesus said, be perfect. God says, Peter, be holy. For without holiness, you're on shaky ground. You like that little pig with the straw in the house. Big bad wolf gonna huff and puff and blow you down and eat you up. Read. Acceptable unto God. Listen to this. Read that again, brother. Read. Holy, acceptable unto back God. Back up a little bit further. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, and acceptable unto God, which is what? Your reasonable service. Then the second verse says, and be not what? Conformed to this world. You have to be careful that you don't allow yourselves to be conformed to this world. There's all sorts of things that look good. But there's an underlying purpose. Amen. Satan ain't going to show you everything right up front like it's all just like you're looking at this plan here. You don't know that it's coming up out of the dirt until you move everything aside and look at it. Satan got a lot of things out that looks good. Looks good. Looks, what you might say, decent. It looks like it's got some substance to it, but it's weak as water. When you dig into it and you find out that this, especially the word of God, that's why I thank God for the word, amen? Because when you reach down into the word of God to try to get the understanding, just like my granddaughter called me last night, she wanted to know about certain things. Why this and why that? I said, get your Bible. Turn with me. Read what this says. Take it word by word, break it down, and explain it to her. And that eased the troubling waters. And that's some troubling waters. Troubling waters. Amen. Troubling waters. It eased the troubling waters. You see, you, you, you got to be careful. Because these underlying little foxes will destroy the vine. Little, in, little insignificant things. It said, you must have an indignation, the spark said, against sin against the preacher who preaches it and the teacher who teaches it and the child who practices it. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Read. For I say through the grace given unto me. That what? To every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. But? But to think soberly. Read. According as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Second John. First John, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind <clears throat> that you might prove. And listen what John had to say in the second Chapter of 1 John. 15th verse beginning says what? Love not the world. What? Love not the world. Is that in the book? Is it in the book? Love not the world. Read. Neither the things that are in the world. Huh? The world is full of things. You know, ideas, practices, things that look good but aren't good. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Read. If any man love the world. If any man love the world, then what? The love of the Father is not in him. Read. For all the that is in the world. Listen now. The Listen now. All that is in the world, John said, is what? The lust, the lust of the flesh. Of the flesh. You, you notice how today's society women don't want to wear things that will cover them up. Back in the day, women wore tennis shoes and socks. They come to church, they wear stockings. Y'all gonna put stockings out of business. Girdles? Uh-uh. Girdles are out of business. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? You know, they got these little socks now that, that, that's barely just covered it, just enough to get into the shoe, and all you see is nakedness. Elder. And the sister gave us a standard. Yeah. And there, there's some that grew up in this say they had it wrong. They didn't have it wrong, they had it right. See, the, the, the key is to cover the flesh. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, for all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the pride of life. These things is not of God, church. Read. And the lust of the eyes. Read. And the pride of life. Pride of life. Not of, the father, not of the father, but what? But is of the world. It's of the world. 17th verse says in what? And the world passeth away. And? And the lust thereof. But? But he that doeth the will of God. Do the will of God. Read. Forever. Amen. You've got to step on flesh. Amen. Step on it. In conclusion, in the book of Philippians, Fourth chapter. <clears throat> See if we can't finish up here. We're talking about a sure, sure foundation. What did I say? Philippians? Philippians. Fourth chapter. <clears throat> Fourth verse. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. You know, and you, you ever notice. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. If you're speeding 
And you see the policeman, are you happy? <laughs> but if you're doing the speed limit and you come across the policeman watching you, you can rejoice. You know what I'm saying. Rejoice in the Lord always. You see, if you are settled on a sure foundation, you know, I got what I call a cruise control. Everybody got it nowadays. Everybody got cruise control nowadays on the cars. And I use mine regularly. I set it right on by the policeman. I was out on 64 one day. I set my cruise control, and there's a police over here in the right-hand lane. State man. I rolled right up on him in the left lane. He going slower than I was going. I did like this. Kept on going. Cruise control. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. So listen, read. And again, I say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. Moderation, moderation. Read. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. God is watching everything you do. I don't care if you're in Florida. I was in Canada one time, and the Lord brought to my attention, you are out of the country, but you're not out of sight. You might be out of America, but you ain't out of my sight. I see and I know everything is going on. Read. Be careful for nothing. Ooh, be careful in parents. Be careful for the little insignificant things that children will come home or come up with because they are coming across it at school. My mother used to download us delete and reprogram us and send us back to school the next day. And here that's all you see now. They, they download, delete, and reprogram. Mom did it back there in the 50s. Okay, what went on today? Well, let me tell you what God says. This is what the word of God says about these circumstances or situations. She's deleting the files that you done gone through today. And then she reprograms you with what? The solid foundation. Read. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be, be careful, careful for nothing but what? But in everything by prayer and supplication. With? Let what? Let your request be made known unto God. Hey Amen. You've got, if you are on a solid foundation, I mean, your status is in the acceptable mode. You can go to God and ask him for whatever you wish. And if it's according to his will, guess what? It's yours. I believe that. I'm a firm believer that God has the capacity and the ability. It stands. Read. And the peace of God. And the what? And the peace of God. Which does what? Which passeth all understanding. Shall. Keep your hearts and minds. Read. In Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are what? True. Whatsoever things are what? Honest. Whatsoever things are what? Just. Whatsoever things are what? Pure. Whatsoever things are? Lovely. Whatsoever things are? Of good report. If there be any virtue and if there be any praise, then do what? Think on these things. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The next verse says what? Listen. Those things which you have both learned. Those things which you have both learned, and it's one thing that we have learned for Elder Life of Solomon showing his wife is to be a peach out of reach. Fox was trying to jump up and get that peach. Couldn't get it. Finally gave up and he said, I didn't want it anyhow because the peach was out of reach. Stay out of the reach of the devil. When you get out of sin, get as far away from sin as you possibly can. 
because it's evident with the downfall of the world trade buildings that what? You can get out of the building, but you got to get out and away from in order to escape what might come down on top of you. So listen, read that again. Those things which ye have both learned, read, and received, read, and heard, and read, and seen, and in seen in me, what? Do. do. The standard of the righteousness of God, just do them. And watch that. Watch this there. And the God of peace what? shall be with you. Huh? All you gotta do is just do it. There's a shirt out there that said, do it. Just do it. If you be willing and obedient, thank you, brother. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth. For the Lord have spoken. So those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And a God of peace shall be with you. May God bless you, church. Heaven ever smile upon you. Let us continue to hold on and hold out. Look up, but don't give up. May my status, amen, and you can take that. Everybody can take that personally. May my standard. My status with God be acceptable. God's not going to accept anything. And so when you look to be acceptable, then you will govern yourself according to God's holy plan, the word of God. Amen? The foundation of God stands.